Today on Mr. Tesalonian, we're going to remodel the wind generator design that I showed you a couple weeks ago and make it a much more efficient and higher torque output design. The last design that I showed you, we used a bunch of concentric rings as deflector plates to deflect the air up through a central column and into a single turbine blade. We used a standard turbine design, which is basically what you'd see on any wind generator out there. Five blades and the blades are designed very similar to what you'd see on an airplane prop. But for today's design, we're going to change up the entire rotor, make it instead of a single rotor blade, we're going to have actually five rotor blades inside of our concentric rings. Each rotor blade is going to align with the top of one of the concentric rings and allow the air from the deflector plate below it to actually come in contact with the turbine directly right there, instead of going up through the entire column and interacting with only one turbine blade. So really quickly here, we'll start again with what we had before. We just have a bunch of concentric rings. Let me bring that down into the shot for you. We'll get a nice view on that real quick. So you can see here we've got basically a bunch of different rings that are angled up towards the center and each one of them is a little bit bigger than the next all the way up. With the last design what we did was basically use the air from each one of the plates to be deflected up to the column into a single turbine head up here at the very top within what I call the confinement ring. The new design is actually going to have a turbine blade sitting within the confinement area of each one of these deflector rings. So we're going to end up with five different turbine blades, one for each one of our deflector rings, and it's going to sit basically right at the top edge of the deflector ring right here. And that way any of the air coming from the deflector below that is going to have to interact with that turbine blade and deliver its power directly to the rotor shaft. So now that you've seen that, let me go ahead and grab one of the new designs so you can see what we've got going on here. First of all, we've got a rotor right here to show you. And if we zoom in on that, you can see what we've got going on. So with the old design, we had just five blades up here at the top, and those blades would interact with all the air that was funneled up through the column. On this new rotor design, what we've used is basically the same blade pattern as what you would see inside of a turbojet engine, this outer ring design right here. I've added to the very top one a, another fan blade design into the center part of it. That way any of the air that bypasses the lower rotors will still have a fan blade in the center here to come in contact with. And that should deliver a lot of torque to the design. Let me go ahead and change the angle so you can see this. So there you go. Instead of having a single turbine blade up here at the very top within the confinement ring, we now have a turbine blade that will actually line up with the top edge of each one of these deflector plates which will deliver all the airflow from each one of the deflector plates directly into the blades of each one of these rotors and each one of those is powering a central drive shaft. This should be a very torquey, very high output design. Let me go ahead and take this apart a little bit so you can see what we've got going on here. The top blade is a little bit different than all the rest of them. I've added this fan blade design here in the center of it. The rest of them, if I pull that out of the way, you'll notice that there is no fan blade design in the center. It's just a outside ring design that you typically see as the actual drive fan blades inside of a turbojet engine. So there you go, there's a good look at it. And the reason I added the fan blades in the center of the top one is because you notice here the centers of all these are open. So there's the chance that air could actually bypass some of these blades and make its way up through the center. And if it does, I still wanted a set of blades there to interact with that air and gain as much energy out of it as we possibly can. So there you go, that's what this turbine design actually looks like. We've got two of them we're going to print out just to test out to see which one of them actually works better. So let's go ahead and quickly put those all back together and I'll align that with the actual outer ring here so you can see what it looks like. Get that lined up, give me just a second. So let's go ahead and do a top view here and then I'm going to go ahead and take apart this design just the blades themselves, and I'll pull the top blade out and you should be able to see what we've got going on down below that. If I get the angle just right, you'll be able to see the next blade down aligned right with the top edge of the lower deflector plate just below that. And that way any of the air coming off the deflector plate down below this blade actually has to be funneled directly up into that since it sits directly above the lip of the lower deflector blade. So most of that air is going to come up and directly interact with our turbine blade right there. And that same thing is going to happen down below that. So if I go ahead and pull that one out of there, you'll be able to see the next one down is basically the same thing. We'll zoom in just a little bit on that so you can see it a little better. So you can see from that angle how nice it lines up right with the top edge of that deflector ring. Now I think this design is going to work really well. I did modify this a little bit just to see if we could make it even a better design. You can see the blades for that right here at the top. 
Those are all going to stack exactly the same as these blades. This is basically a full fan blade design. I'll go ahead and zoom in on it so you can see it. I'll change the angle so you can see the openings in there. So there you go. You can see that there's actually an opening going down through each one of those. We're going to stack that design up just like what you just saw there. It's going to level out with each one of the deflector plates exactly the same as what I just showed you. And we're going to test both of these designs out once I print them and see which one of them actually works better. And then we'll compare those with our original design that has a single rotor blade at the very top within that confinement ring. Just to see if one of them is truly better than the other. Which one works better in high speed winds, which one works better in low speed winds, all those kinds of things. The neat thing about the design that I've got here is instead of having our support rods coming out from right here with these holes right in the side of our deflector ring, like let me go ahead and zoom in for you. Instead of having rods coming out of these holes right here going into the central rod, what I've done this time, let me go ahead and pull this out of the way so you can see what we've got going on. Uh, let's go ahead and do this. Alright, and we'll grab all that. We'll back up a little bit. Pull that out of the way. And let's grab this one right here. Pull it into the shot and I'll show you guys what we've got going on here. So like I said, instead of having support rods coming through these holes right here onto the side, we now have support rods that actually have a block that comes down and rests on top of the top edge of the upper confinement ring. The uh, later model of this is this guy right here. You can actually see there's some holes right there in the outside edges of these, which you don't see in this one. Those holes will line up with the holes right here in the upper confinement ring. This is the improved model right here. You can see there's four little holes. There's one right here, there's one on the opposite side, and then two over here. And those will align right up with the holes right here with this top cross support piece right there once it's flipped over. We'll be able to set that right on top, put some screws to each one of those holes right there, and connect that directly to the top confinement ring. The cup that's up inside of the center piece right there will support the central drive shaft that comes up here out of the top. Let me go ahead and zoom back in on this so you can see it. So we'll take that apart a little bit and show you guys what it looks like underneath there. So once again, once we remove the four screws that hold this onto the upper confinement ring, we'll be able to pull that out of the way. You can see the central shaft that comes up out of there. That'll actually be riding inside of that. Later on, this will be where the actual gen set's going to be mounted right inside of that. So you'll actually be able to pull the gen set up, the whole top support mount out. So once we remove the top cross, you'll be able to come in, pull the central rotor out of there, and replace it with a different rotor depending on what wind speed you have or where you live or what you want to use it for. This will make it a more modular design, so we'll actually be able to interchange the rotors. Once again, you'll just be able to replace the rotor directly down into the center. Let's see if we can get that to line up with the uh, alignment button here real quick. There we go. And then simply just replace the top cross on there, put the four screws in, and now you've got your entire turbine back together. And with this design, we'll even be able to switch out to just a single rotor so you have that standard five blade wind generator design sitting up here within the confinement ring. So let me get this over to the Creality K1C. We'll start printing out all the parts. I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. So I finished our second rotor. I've installed inside of the actual outer case of the wind turbine just so you can see what it looks like. Let's go ahead and just give it a quick little spin. There you go. So one of the things I have noticed here that is going to be a potential difference between these two designs and our original design is obviously the weight of the actual turbine. So we may not get the exact same startup speeds as the original design. So let me go ahead real quickly here and I'll show you the two turbines side by side. We'll pull that out. We'll pull this over here to the side. So here you go. Here's our second turbine right there. Put both of them in the middle of the shop for you so you can see them. So we've got one that's basically a bunch of really tightly packed fan blades and we've got one that's really similar to the actual turbine blades of a turbojet engine. And I'm really curious which one of the two is actually going to function better. I have a feeling that this design right here is going to deliver a lot more torque once it's up and moving. It may require a little bit higher wind speed because it's a little bit heavier. There you go guys, there's our two new turbine designs. We've got a new case and a new top design that allows us to interchange the turbines which is going to be a pretty neat function of this new turbine design that you can actually switch out your